Hey everybody, happy July. Uh, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I normally do videos sharing about my crafts on my channel, but lately I've gotten into houseplants um, the past year, and so I've decided to share my plant journey. So if you're new here, welcome to my plant journey, especially if you're new here from checking out my craft videos. And if you're new here in general, welcome, of course. And if you're returning, welcome back. Um, Full disclosure on my plant journey, I am still learning, so I wouldn't take anything that I do as knowledge or, sorry, information, because I just really don't, I don't know what I'm doing a lot of the time. Anywho, um, I did finally take some notes for this video and for my other craft video so that it won't be so scattered. Um, so from my last video to this one, I did go on vacation to New Hampshire with my boyfriend. And one thing that I was like kind of woe about that I didn't think about, and I've been seeing it a lot on TikTok and on Instagram, is all of the plant parents who recently got plants during the pandemic and are now able to travel. And you're like, great, what do I do with all of these plants? So I have maybe 30 a little bit over 30 or so houseplants now. It's really grown from the two, was it two or three? I think one died. Two that I bought last summer from Lowe's. Um, I bought a beautiful Fitonia and I got a little cactus and those are still alive, except for one. I can't remember what the third one was that I bought. Oh, no, that one's alive too. It's a bigger Fitonia that's in my living room. Um, still alive, still going strong and it kind of started the bug. Uh, the bug also came from uh, visiting my dad, and he, he, he just has such a green thumb, so it's been really good. Anywho, it kind of spiraled out of control really quickly. It's really exciting and really invigorating to buy a new plant and have these plants. Then I got ready for vacation and I was like, oh my gosh, they're all going to die while I'm gone. Luckily, I was only gone for seven days and I kind of panicked and I did a lot of YouTube watching. So I think thank you to Harley G and uh, Becca de la Plants um, for their videos on vacationing and prepping your plants for um, going away. Luckily, like I said, it was only seven days. It wasn't that long. So um, they just needed, I just, what I did was I gave them a good watering um, the Saturday morning before I left. And then when I came back, everybody was actually, they were okay, which I was really happy about. Hold on, give me one second. Sorry about that. I really had to get a tissue. Like my allergies and the dust is really getting all kind of crazy. So I apologize. Um, so yeah, I watered them all before leaving. I made sure to take care of like any kind of like finicky ones before. And then I've kind of learned a lot about my guys and some of them really don't need water every week. Uh, more like some of them need every two. So they were, those guys were totally fine. Uh, for the most part, I did not come home. Did I come home to a dead plant? Yes, I came home to a dying plant. But I feel like it wasn't my fault. It didn't die because I went on vacation. It died because it was poorly potted in a pot. Um, yeah, I'll talk more about that one in a second. And I was most worried about my plants that are outside. So I do have an aloe vera. I have three cacti and I have a jade plant that I left outside. And while we were outside, New York City got a massive heat wave. So we were like in fields of 105 plus and for those days, I just thought about my cat and I thought about my plants outside. I did have a cat sitter coming and checking in on my cat, but I didn't want to ask her to check on my plants. Like, I just thought that was kind of weird. Um, luckily enough, they were... Out of all the plants, I have to say, when I went away, that I was most worried about, the ones I was most worried about were thriving. I came back, they had a whole bunch of new growth. They were like partying. They were like, hey... They had a great time and they had like a one or two days of like some really heavy rain and they're doing fantastic. And we're actually in like a mini heat wave right now today is a feels of like a hundred plus. So it's really hot outside for them. I'm going to do a whole separate video on the update of my outdoor plants. I'm really happy with how they're doing. I'm so excited for them. Um, they're growing like crazy, especially my aloe vera. Like I'm like, where am I going to put this when I bring it back inside? Um, 
yeah, but I'm so happy about that. And what I did is most of my plants are in this room. So this is my crafts room slash office. It'll no longer be my office now that school is all done and next school year we should be all coming back in person and no remote learning. Um, so what I also did was with my shades, I just closed them a little bit so that they wouldn't get too much light if they really needed a lot of water. Um, and it, it really all seemed to work out really well. No, nobody was really like on the verge of death other than somebody that I'll show you in a minute, which I just think that me and this plant, I love it, but it just might not be meant to be. Okay, but I do want to start with those who are thriving and my July favorites because I came home and somebody was just looking really good. So I'm going to show you first my marble snow queen pothos. She is beautiful. Um, I got this off of Etsy and it only came with, uh, it came fully rooted. Ooh some dusty leaves. I really got to do some leaf cleaning. Um, these two leaves and like one little leaf that was coming out of each one and those leaves died off and I got really sad and it took a while for some new growth to come in but now this one got a little, I don't know what happened to this guy. I think he got a little scorched but oh guys check out. Yeah I really got to do some dusting but this one this is quickly becoming one of my favorite plants. I I have another marble queen or marble. I don't know if it's you call it queen. I don't know. Anywho, I just have another marble uh, pothos, 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 and it this it isn't as beautiful as the snow queen. This is just gorgeous. So I'm really excited for it to grow some more. I would love to chop and prop soon, but still too early since it's a baby plant itself. I just wanted to get a little bit more bushy looking, but she is doing fantastic. And yeah, no roots, looking good so far. Love that plant so much. Um, and another one who was just looking fabulous when I came was my Monstera Addisonii. I feel like I don't do anything for this plant and it just thrives and just has so many new leaves. I gotta do some more dusting again. Oh boy. No, no pests. These are no pests. It's just, oh, the new leaf kind of turned yellow, guys. I've never had that happen. Aw oh, man, bummer, bummer, bummer. That might have been a casualty of going away. Cause that leaf was coming out like that when I left and just also, I'm kind of worried to have some pests. Uh, ooh, she is very pregnant. So we'll be getting a new leaf there soon. Sorry if I keep like rubbing my nose, but I'm really having some allergy stuff going on right now. Yep, I love it though. I am eventually going to give it a moss pole, but I just wanted to grow out a little bit more. So I really got this with just four little leaves and has really taken off and it's beautiful. Ooh, we have a new leaf coming up up here. Ooh, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I might throw this one in the shower next time for watering just to wash off those leaves. I do do an alcohol spray um, probably like once a week because I've been watching a lot of videos and I'm sort of getting really paranoid about pests and mainly because I think I'm so underprepared for them. I don't know what I would do. I have a spray here that has neem oil I think in it, but I'm not 100% sure it's safe for indoor plants. I'll try to show it in a little bit, but yeah, I just feel like I'm not prepared for pests. So if I get pests, I feel like they're just really going to die. Oh, and it's getting really hot in this room. Sorry guys, so I might have to speed up this video because this room does not have air conditioner and like I said, it's 100 degrees outside. So, oh, so thriving and favorites. Hold on. Okay, I got into a little bit of a coughing fit. Ah, oh, gosh, sorry. Um, my watermelon pepperonia is bouncing back. Look at all of these new leaves. These four are all brand new leaves. So when I got it, I think it already had some kind of fungal thing going on. 
some of the leaves were getting like these black splotches on them and I was looking it up and I saw it was some kind of fungal thing wow, wow it dust really accumulates fast um and so I just chopped all of that off and it doesn't seem to have spread to any of the other branches or leaves and I'm really happy about that because it was it was like really moving fast and I think it was um a little bit over watered at the nursery because when I got it it was really sopping wet and I don't know better I don't like to move them right away so I left it and so after anywho after all of that I did prop some of the ugly leaves that did end up falling off that were healthy but and then all my new babies kept dying so yeah I had to cut all of that bad stuff off and now I have a healthier looking watermelon pepperoni I gotta rotate this baby but um I'm really excited. It looks like there's some new growth coming in again. I don't know if you can see. Oh, this plant is just so cute. And look at this little planter I got. I got this at Rite Aid when they were having like a 50% off sale. So cute. And I water this little guy like every two weeks. And it's so happy with that watering schedule. And it sits in my window. This is a west facing window. Um, it's partially obstructed by another by my own building and by another building next to me. So it doesn't get full, full, full sun. It It's kind of indirect. And of course, when I went away on vacation, I had to get a new plant. So I found a wishless plant at Walmart. I love when I find cheap plants, especially because in New York City, this would have been expensive, guys. I got this free from ZZ. And look at the cute pot it came in. And yes, I only paid 17 bucks for it. Crazy. This would have easily been like 30 bucks in New York City, just about, for one this size. So I am ecstatic. I am loving my ZZ, that, a regular green ZZ that's in my kitchen right now. I really wanted a Raven one. So this one's just hanging out in this room. It's a little bit quarantine kind of. I mean, I did spray it a whole bunch. I quarantined it for a few days in our vacation condo. And I did pick the one that did not have mealybugs. Because <laughs> the other one that I really, really, really wanted, it was beautiful, it was full, it had mealybugs. Or at least, like, residue of mealybug. So I did not want to bring that in. As I said, I am so scared of pests. So, love it. Glad I love this baby. Um, what else? What else can I show and share? Let me just rotate this little guy. Oh, this is a new one for me. It's not really haul, but one of my students gave me an orchid on the last day. I feel like that's the teacher gift. So my co-teacher ended up with two and she's new to plants also. So she's freaking out about how to care for it. But I gave her some tips and my boyfriend's mom is really good at orchid care. And of course I watched Harley G's video on orchid care and I feel prepared. I'm still a little scared, but I'm excited. Um, I have to say, I'm so new to plants that a few years ago I had gotten an orchid from a student and I just thought it was like a, like a flower, like something that, you know, I thought this was like prettied up for you from the plant shop, flower shop rather, and they just put this flower in there and it's like here here's a flower and I did not know that it was a living plant so of course I left it you know somewhere that it's not getting any light <laughs> like in my kitchen and when it died I was like oh look the flower died bye <laughs> I just didn't know that it, it like so it will grow and like keep I just didn't know but now I'm happy I don't know what kind of orchid it is but it's really cute and I know it's not in the best pot, but I'm keeping an eye on it. It at least has a lot of drainage holes in the bottom. I do want to put it in one that has more holes in the sides, but I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be a good plant parent for this one. So that's hanging out. And then I think that's really, oh, I came home to a new leaf on somebody that hasn't had growth in like months. So this was a mystery um, <clears throat> cutting that I got with the Marble Snow Queen. And I also ordered some uh, snake plant cuttings from that person on Etsy. And then I ordered 
a little mystery cutting. Was this a mystery or did it come with a mystery? It came with a free mystery. And so I know it's some kind of syndapsis, so like a silver pothos. And it wasn't really doing anything. I got it with this one little leaf and then this new guy up here. But then I came home. Look at it. To this tiny, tiny, tiny little leaf, guys. Look how beautiful it is. I'm really excited. I did end up buying a bigger syndapsis um, at my local flower shop, but I want to watch this one grow too. I like watching them grow, but I also want like a mature plant already. Is there anyone else out there like that? I have so many baby plants. That's it for my loves and my faves of July or June rather. I think of June, past month, even though I'm posting this in July. Um, I guess I could do a propagate. Oh, who's dying? So, I don't know if you guys remember, last video I showed my dying string of pearls. And then, I got another one. <laughs> and this time, someone recommended me to get a already mature, fully established string of pearls. So I went out and I did that. Little did I know, it came in this here hanging planter. It was full. It was beautiful. I didn't water it. It came from the store well watered already. I checked it with my finger and the moisture meter. It was good. And then <clears throat> like a week before, I love how it says easy care on it, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, a week before I left on my trip, I checked. It was fully dry. I was like, okay, let me bottom water you. It drank. When I came home from my trip, it was all shriveled up and was it looked like it was rotting. I was pretty sure it was rotting. I posted about it online. Some people said not enough water. Some said too much water. I really think it was rotting. And then I did discover at the bottom of this pot, I decided to take it out. I had a funny feeling. There was like this other additional black plate inside that with that, the plant was sitting on the black plate. And so at the bottom of it, I don't know if you can really see, sits a pool of water because then these holes also are raised up. So it was sitting in a pool of water, probably down here, and it was also still wet because of that raised black plate in there. I took it out of there. I'll show you what I did. I put, um, come here my friend, please don't drop any more pearls. And some people were like, just chop it and propagate it. Listen, I've tried to propagate. <laughs> I don't have luck propagating string of pearls. I got a string of um, dolphins and it rotted already. Like I think it did. Do I still have it? Yeah, it looks like it's dying. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it was so full and plump guys. So I got it out of that pot right away. I put it in this terracotta. Oh, there's still some strands that aren't all shriveled up and dying. I mean, I'm hoping this one won't fully rot off. But I mean, there are some that are like really kind of rotty. I did try to place some fresh strands on the top. This guy did just get some water today because it was fully dry. I just checked it. I didn't want him to dry out anymore because I don't want any of the old ones to like die more. If that makes any sense. And I did try to see, look at these guys. Like, should I just cut and propagate? Cause then that looks rich and full. I'm really unsure what to do. Like those look rotted away. Like they're not going to feed the rest of the plant anymore. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my eye on it, I guess. It was hanging in my west facing window, you know, living a good life, I thought until I discovered that that pot was not doing anything for it. So, I mean, this is what I'm left with. This is nothing compared to what it looked like. It was a full, full, very full and very mature plant. My mom's died as well. And she had it in the same pot and hers was dying before I got mine. And I didn't think about the pot to help her. So I think hers is gonna be dead before mine because hers was at least a month older than mine. I'm really sad, but okay. <laughs>
I will show you quickly. I guess we'll do a quick propagation update. Oh, another new arrival. I traded, I make um, crochet plant hangers and I traded with some of my group and I got a philodendron mycon. Um, I kind of like pinned it down a little bit so it'll look a little bit more full instead of just one little vine. And the new leaf is not coming out though. I don't know. It was well rooted so I didn't feel like I needed to um, let it hang around in more water. I hope it does something soon. Oh, oh, we have a baby! I love that when I discover it online on video with you guys. How can I show it without all the dirt falling out? I'm still trying to figure, look! <gasps> guys, it's there. Yes. Okay, I know I'm a spaz. I know I'm a spaz. Oh, and can we just, I showed this in my crafting vlog, but oh, can we just my Televera pot? Love it! I don't know who I'm gonna put in it yet. I'm not gonna plant them directly inside, but yeah. Okay, propagations. So, like I said, I got this string of dolphins. I cut some of the dolphins off, like other people said, and it just is rotting, and now look what it's doing. What What is going on? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with propagating these string of plants. I have to also say my string of hearts is just doing sad. I don't know what's going on, guys. I really want these guys to love me, but like I just cut this string of hearts. I mean, this growth is looking great. These are getting all yellow and I'm not giving it a bunch of water. The new growth is dead. I'm really feeling sad. String of hearts, I really want to happen for me. I really do. My silver glory is hanging in there. It keeps getting on and off the struggle bus. I don't know. Okay, but here is my Syngonium. I got this cutting from my mom. It has some beautiful, beautiful roots. I cannot wait to pot it up. That's a propagation update. And another propagation update. Here we go. I got this also when I gave the plant hanger to that person. They gave me some more Philodendron Brazil. And they're getting roots beautifully. Love it. And so check it out, guys. Here it starts. I put my first propagation from my dying string of pearls in here. This is the right way, right? I took off a few pearls. I'm putting it in the water. Why does it not want to live or get roots? Like it, it rots right away. And I tried it in sphagnum moss. Nothing worked. Maybe I should share my experiment. So this was the prop. Oh, I came home to a dead uh, string of pearls propagation, by the way. So I am trying. These were some string of pearls that I got for free from my uh, local plant trading group. And what if I keep it in a baggie and give it some humidity? What do you guys think? I think I'm just going to get more fungus gnats, but, uh, oh, I got to put some more holes in this bag, actually. Yeah, the holes are rolling on the side. Oh, when I use this, because this is how I got my heartleaf philodendron to finally uh, give me some new growth. Okay, I'll make some new holes, but I'm trying this. What do you guys think? I mean, I didn't have any luck with sphagnum moss, so I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, and I think that's okay. Under my grow light, you go. Oh, I will show. I did propagate a piece of that peperomia, and I have this little guy. So I'm excited for that. That'll probably be up for trade in my group. And I, or for free. I mean, I really don't need more plants because I have to say I've been getting really overwhelmed with all the plant care. I cared for some plants this morning and I really felt like it was too much. So I am going to try to slow down. I'm going to try to get in a rhythm and also remember that they don't need me every single second of the day or every day. So now I'm going to try to do Wednesdays and Sunday unless there's a plant that visibly 
And I know you should do it visibly, but I haven't learned them that well yet. Some of them I do know when they need water, but when there's one like I can visibly see. So if it's like Thursday and my Fitonia is completely like drooped, I will water her. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah, I'm really scaling it down because I really felt overwhelmed, super overwhelmed. All right, guys, um, I was going to share, but I, I think this video is getting maybe kind of long, so I might make another video, but I wanted to share and hopefully I don't spill this. I found, I'm part of a community garden in my neighborhood and this giant, giant ZZ plant, as you can see, it's really big, was just sitting on one of the tables in our community garden and was complete, the roots were, oh, the roots are now so much better. Let me see if I can show it up without making a mess. Were completely dehydrated when I first found this plant. Now they've plumped up quite a bit, even the rhizome. Whoa, now I don't know if I wanna cut it the way I was thinking. But the thing is, it's like, I wouldn't wanna stick it too far in this. You know what I mean? It's kind of leggy. And what I was gonna do in this video was cut and propagate with y'all. But I think I might make a separate video because this is getting kind of long. But, so stay tuned. I am going to try to propagate, cut and propagate the ZZ plant. And I'll keep you guys updated on how it goes. So, I mean, yeah, I think that's, that's the update. Um, everything else is really doing well. I'm not having luck with string of blank plants. Which is making me really, really sad, guys, because I really love those plants. My string of hearts not making it, string of pearl, string of dolphin propagation. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. I am using a really airy soil, perlite, cacti soil, bottom watering, really being conscious about not top watering. Now I went and bought a mature plant, like was suggested, and it's dying also instead of buying a baby or having a cutting. So if you have some tips, please leave them below. I don't wanna keep buying these plants and keep killing them, but I really want at least one string of hearts, please. Like I've been holding off on getting the really pink variegated one because that's my dream plant. And if I get it and I kill it, I'm gonna be really sad. But I think that's it guys. So I will make a separate video for my ZZ plant propagation because this is getting really long. I hope everyone is healthy and safe and happy and enjoying summer so far and having a great time with your plants. Um, I know I am, even though I got a little bit stressed out this morning, I'm still enjoying them a lot. Um, and that's it. Take care, everybody. Bye.